needs to hear the gospel I need to be delivered and set free because it's important that we understand how to flow with God I am from the Caribbean island of Barbados and your pastor is from the continent of Africa and many of you are from different places but God has one purpose in mind to bring his people together to unite people to bring honor and glory to his name now it's important that we understand certain principles even before I start to speak this morning because when you were at school there was something that was important all of you had to have it what was that talk to me what was important books you had to have at least a textbook from which you studied your work didn't you if, if nothing more, you had to have a book to teach you all about mathematics, geometry, algebra, history, ge you know what I mean, all the different subjects. So the point I'm trying to make is that there is a very important thing in learning. That if you're going to come into any learning opportunities, it's going to come from some kind of book. And I'm suggesting to you this morning that we are here because this is a church and that there are reasons and methods by which you are going to learn and the church really is first a worshiping body so we come to church to worship god the second thing about the church is it's a teaching body so we come to church to be taught in the word the third thing about the church is the church is a fellowship in body. So we come to church to fellowship one with the other. Because the words say that we should not forsake ourselves as the manner of some is. Or we should assemble together so that we can help each other. We come to church to unite one with the other. It's important to understand that the church is a praying body. Now these things are very important for us to understand and every aspect of this is going to be done here this morning. We're going to, we've been worshiping the Lord, you're going to be taught in the word and it's going to be very important that we minister to each other because there are people here with problems. Amen. Hello? Amen. Are there any people here with problems? Amen. I'll tell you something. There's one thing that we all have in common and that's the word problems. Oh yes. The word problem, we all have problems, but we have to trust God to grant us wisdom, understanding, to deal with our problems. He hasn't promised to remove the problems, but he has promised to give us the grace that we should be overcomers. Okay, so that's important that we understand that. The same way that you had to use your book of instructions when you were at school, the Bible is the book of instructions on Christian living and we have to appreciate that. Now if you are going to grow in the Christian life because there are seven stages of spiritual development. If you're going to grow, the first stage is spiritual birth. The second stage is spiritual growth. The, the third stage is spiritual discipline. Because children have got to be disciplined, you as a believer have got to be disciplined. You've got to be, to be disciplined to understand the word. Okay, and after that, we get spiritual responsibilities. Then you get spirit, then you, you come into a system where you're going to disciple others, spiritual discipleship. Then you come into spiritual maturity. Okay, those are the stages of spiritual growth. Okay, now it's very important that you have a book of instructions on Christian living. And your Bible is that book of instructions. And you have got to understand the importance of the Bible. Now, if you go to buying any kind of electronic equipment, or they are going to give you a book of instructions. Isn't that so? Yes. Now, you can do two things with it. You can put the book of instructions to one side, and you can fiddle around with the piece of equipment until you get to a problem, and then look at the book of instructions. Or you can sit down and read the book of instructions and step by step understand how to do what it says. The choice is yours. So there are a lot of people who come to church, but they prefer to listen 
and not read, not take the time to discipline their minds to read. Come on. If change is going to come about, you have first got to learn to discipline your mind. Because if you change your knowledge, you can change your thinking. If you change your thinking, you can change your speaking. If you change your speaking, you'll be able to change your actions. And if you change your actions, you can change your habits. So a change begins with what do you know? All right? Okay, so it's important that you understand the process of learning. Because in the process of learning, you have to begin with what you know, right? So you have to change your knowledge, okay? God is going to hold us responsible for what we know. One of the biggest problems in the world today is that people are destroyed, the word says, for what? Lack of knowledge. Because of ignorance, we cannot function the way God would have us to function. And therefore, God wants us to understand that if we are going to do what he wants us to do, we have got to understand how to read the word. Okay? And therefore, I'm going to give you a series of scriptures to help you to understand the importance of the word. Now, if I had to sort of summarize and give my sermon a title this morning, it would be, What Do You Know? Mm. All right? Okay, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, we hear the word saying, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What's the first word in that text? Study. Study. We have to do our best as believers Get into the word and study it, break it down, understand it, dissect it, if we are going to be followers of the Lord Jesus. So that's the first text I want you to underline. Now, as far as I'm concerned, your Bible is not a souvenir. It's a textbook. Therefore, you need to be able to underline things in it. You know what I mean? It is not, you are not going to be judged on how clean and tidy your Bible looks. You are going to be judged on whether or not you read it. That's right. You know? Now, I go through a Bible sometimes uh, every two years I have to change because I mark it up, I use it, you know what I mean? Because it's my textbook on Christian living and therefore I need to be able to use it, okay? So we see that we are told that we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. But, let us, but then somebody says, but is it, can we be sure that the Bible is the word of God? And maybe we can take some scriptures but not all. Well, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17. And I want us to read at the first word in that text only. You got it? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17. What is the first word in that text? What's the first word in that text? Okay, now not some, not sometimes, not maybe, not perhaps, but what? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto what? All good works, all right? So we see we have a responsibility to believe all the Bible, not some of it, not endorse some of it and not the other, but all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and we therefore have a right to believe it. Let's turn to Psalm 119 and we're going to read from verse 9 to verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 9 to verse 11. Okay. <clears throat> I want to make sure that you understand the importance of studying the word, all right? It's not just about trying to entertain you. I could come and preach and jump up and down and you could be excited, but you go home and when you ask yourself, what have I learned? And you can't remember what you have learned, but you know it was a good sermon because the preacher was jumping up and down and you were excited and you were shouting. I don't want you to shout, I want you to learn because I want change to come in your life, okay? Is that all right? Okay, Psalm 119, verse 9 to verse 11. 
Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid where? In my heart. That I might not do what? Sin against thee. So the knowledge of God's word prevents us from deliberately and presumptuously sinning against God. So you understand the importance of the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we know God's word, we are going to be convicted as the Holy Spirit would guide us and as the devil would tempt us. We are going to be convicted and we're not going to give in to the devil as easily. All right. Therefore, it's important that we understand what the word says. Okay, in, in verse 105, the said 119 Psalm. You just hold on to Psalm 119. There's a lot of truth there for us to be able to endorse. Thy word is a lamp unto what? My feet. Huh? And a light unto my path. All right. And here again, verse 130. You can underline it. You don't have to write it. You can underline it. That's why you need to get uh, on the liner that you can understand. And as you go through, you can remember. The entrance, verse 130. The entrance of thy word giveth what? Right. It giveth what? Right. It giveth understanding unto the simple. It matters not how simple you are. It matters not how ignorant you are. The entrance of the word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Right. Therefore, it is important that you follow the scriptures. And, and verse 160 says, The word is true for men. Look at verse 160 of Psalm 119. Just hold on to Psalm 119. Thy word is true for men. And every one of thy righteous judgments do what? Endures forever. All right. Okay. Therefore, um, it's important that we know because the word also says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. All right. Therefore, it's important that we understand what the scripture says. Now, I said at the beginning that if you change your knowledge, you can change your thinking. Because all of us are going to be led by what we know. You can't go any further than what you know. If you went to a country where they spoke French and you did not know the language, you could not speak it. All right? So all of us are going to be uh, uh, sort of guided by what we know. All right? Therefore, I come to my text now. Um, look, let's turn to the book of St. John's Gospel. St. John's Gospel, chapter 9. And we're going to read some verses there. <clears throat> now, this, this is an account of Jesus. I told him my text was, what? do you know all right here is an account of jesus as he healed a man who was blind now as jesus passed by he saw a man who was blind from birth and his disciples asked him saying rabbi who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind jesus answered neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of god should be revealed in him I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am in, the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clear with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes open? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clear and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received sight. They said unto him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. He didn't know. All right. 
They brought him and form, that was formerly blind to the Pharisees, because it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clear and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. And he said, he put clear on my eyes and washed, and I see. Okay? Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such things? And there was division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, and he had been blind and received his sight. Until they called the parents of him who had received his sight, and they asked him, saying, Is this your son? And you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now see, we do not see. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he's of age. Ask him. So then again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I